Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Super Nerd here. Welcome back to the second episode of Spyro the Dragon Reignited Trilogy. In the last episode, we explored the Artisan's homeworld along with the first level in our journey. And in this episode, we're going to explore the secret cave, Sunny Flight, that we unlocked last time. So let's hop right into this. Alright guys, welcome to Sunny Flight. This level's a bit different than all the other levels. There'll be one, shall we say, timer level in each of the homeworlds. And look at that, I failed already. Alright, let's try this again. So like I was saying guys, there is one timer world in each of the artisan, or not each of the artisan homeworlds, each of the homeworlds in general. And they're a bit different because in this level you're timed. And rather than collecting all the coins for some other objective like that, your objective here is to complete four trials, shall we call them. And the trials uh, involve breaking chests, flying through objects, destroying other things. Um, obviously this is the first one. And the way I like to play through them is I have like a set run for each trial. Uh, for this one, as you saw first, I went to the cave to the right to get all the chests. Now I'm following this train track to blow up all these barrels. Once you come out of this tunnel here, following the train track, I like to follow it down and to the right. You'll see some electrified archways. I like to start at the right here and follow this patch of archways. But I like to stop in the middle of the archways and take care of these planes. Now each one's going to be a little bit more difficult than the last one. And again, there are, there's one in each homeworld, so we are going to be doing a couple of these. Um, but other than that, there's not much to these levels. Like I said, you just follow the path and complete each trial. Um, the way these things work and how you get 100% on them though, is for each trial that you pass, uh, you get 60 gems, and then for completing all the trials in a single run, you get 60 more gems. That totals 300 gems per each trial level, or timer level. And with that, I do believe we've just beat our last one. On top of giving gems each part of each trial you get will add to your timer. So if you if it looks like you're running low, get as many trials as possible and that should boost your timer back up. Anyway, so that was our first timer level. All right guys, now that we're back in the artisan home world, we're going to run over directly across the way here through this tunnel with the bright blue gem on it. And we're going to head into the second level in the game. <clears throat> Alright guys, welcome to Town Square. This is a bit more of a linear level than the first one. So I'm going to try and not explain what you guys are watching. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. So, first thing you want to do is head around there, collect all the gems, and then come up the staircase and release this dragon. Welcome to Town Square, Spyro. Begin exploring by gliding to that area with the bulls. Use the right stick to get a good look. All right, so what he's saying is we can glide across here. Remember, gliding is pressing the jump button and then pressing the jump button again in midair. Uh, the next enemies you're going to see are bulls. Now, there's two ways to take out the bulls. I just showed both of them. First one is to charge them. If you do, they'll actually get their horns stuck in the ground, in which case they're actually defeated as is. They'll give you the gems then. Um, and then you can just flame them to get rid of them completely. Or you can just flame them outright at the beginning and that will take care of them. So after you defeat those bulls, climb up the stairs and glide across here, we got another dragon. 
Thanks, Spyro. <laughs> I have the worst itch on the tip of my wing. Did you know that you get your longest glides by pressing the jump button at the very top of your jump? All right, now he was kind of reiterating how to uh, get the longest glide, and it's a bit repetitive, but he actually makes a good point because right up here, we've got a long glide coming up that I'm going to attempt, but for some reason, I never get this on the first try, so we're gonna see how it goes. You wanna jump on this platform, and then at the very top of your jump, glide around, around the tower, and I got a first try, sweet. Um, up here, we've got, oh man, we've got another blue guy who just ran off. I was trying not to trigger him. Um, but so you wanna follow him through here. He actually jumps down and goes back around. Uh, so unless you want to do that, uh, that long glide again, try and get him before he jumps down there. Um, I'm not going to worry about him for now. We're just going to glide over here. And this is actually back towards the beginning of the level. If you look down there, that is the beginning of the level. So uh, Next thing, glide across here onto this platform behind that first dragon release. Uh, you got another bull. And more chest and this is actually kind of a special chest if you flame it three times it actually flies like a top and goes flying off into wherever <laughs> thank you for releasing me spyro you can always check your progress by accessing the guidebook through the pause menu All right, so what he was saying is the guidebook, I haven't explained this bit yet, is if you press select, or if you go into the pause menu and select guidebook, it'll bring up this menu here. Now this shows that the artisan world is 100%, Stone Hill's 100%, Sunny Flight is also 100%, but if you come to Town Square, we see that we've got an egg missing and another dragon missing. We also see that we're missing about 40 gems, 41 to be exact. So that's, that's the guidebook. It's really helpful if you're ever not 100% and you don't know. Oh, look at that, I got him. And you don't know where you're missing gems. You can always go into the guidebook and I'll tell you exactly where they are. So, if you guys didn't see there, I just got the uh, blue thief by jumping down and flaming him right away. Uh, that netted me another dragon egg. So if we check in the guidebook, it does appear now. I uh, got a bunch of chickens here in case you need to restock your health. A few more bulls. Again, this is the first world, so the enemies aren't going to be too difficult. Um, we saw one of these guys earlier. He's a, a bull tamer, Nork, I guess. All he does is punch you if you try and get close, but he runs away from the bull. So nothing too special about him there. Uh, picking up the last of our gems here, we've got one final dragon. And Avar. Hm. Spyro, do you see a man dressed in blue running around here? He's a thief, and he's stolen a dragon egg. You've got to track him down and, and get that egg. Run, run! <laughs> I'm getting a little winded. <laughs> so he was just kind of reiterating the thieves. So I've already explained that. So. Let's hop in the portal and go home. Eight hundred gems in total. Look at that. All right, guys. So that was Town Square. Nice, short, and simple level. Not too bad at all. With that, let's head back out into the main area of the artisan's home. Uh, if we go through, where is it, here, this canyon, now that we've beaten the level, this dragon mouth will actually open, revealing the boss portal. We're not going to go in there until the very end, and we still have another level to complete for them. So with that, let's head over into the hedge maze and go into Dark Hollow.
Alright guys, sorry about the cut here. Anyways, welcome to Dark Hollow. We start out in this little, uh, I don't know, room as you would call it. Nothing in here, just go through the gate. And we've got some new enemies, actually. These guys are shielded norks. What happens is if you try and flame them while the shields are down, they will, uh, they'll block your fire. But if you flame them right before they swing at you, uh, you can get them that way. Otherwise, you can also, oops, I missed. You can also charge them, and that'll take care of them too. Starting up, we got three pillars in front of us. We want to hop up those to start off with. We've got another locked chest, so we're going to have to find a key in this level. And over here, we got another enemy. Now, this guy seems a bit bigger, and if you actually charge him, it won't do anything. So you got to flame the big guys. Anyways, that guy will just smash down on you if you're not quick enough. All you got to do is run up and flame him right away. A couple more enemies up there, and I believe this dragon will actually explain those big enemies. Oh, it's you. I wasn't sure if you'd escape those annoying little creatures. Of course they wouldn't bother me, but here's a hint. Their metal armor is fireproof, but a charge attack will take care of them. Oh, I was wrong. Alright, so yeah, he was just explaining the metal armor does block fire, so if you ever see it, uh, know that you can't flame those enemies. Alright, so here's another shielded Nork. Um, let's see here. Okay, so second part. Entrance is over there. Cliff we just jumped out of is right there. Over here, we've kind of got a split path. we got three shielded Norks with a big guy up there. And we've also got a staircase down here. So we're going to head down first. And as you see, there's a big guy here, but he's also wearing metal. So how might you beat him, you ask? Well, you wait for him to turn around where he's not shielded, and you flame him. Simple as that. Okay, now confession time, guys. When I first played this game, I was probably six, seven years old, and I never actually got past this level because of these guys. I thought this is the way you had to go, and I was too scared of those guys to get past them. So I've never, when I was younger, when I first played, I never actually got past this third level, which is a bummer because the game is actually really awesome. Spyro, wanna know a secret? Use the action button when you wanna zoom in and look around. Oh, your secret's safe with me. All right, so like he was saying, you want to either press the triangle button if you're on PlayStation, or the Y button, or the Y button if you're playing on Xbox, and you actually get almost a first-person view, uh, but it just zooms in, and then you can use the right stick to look around. Anyways, right next to the dragon, we got a key, so we know where to go with that. Uh, down on this platform, we got a few gems, but other than that, there's nothing else in here, so head back up. Alright, so now that we're back up, I'm going to head over to those pillars quick so we can unlock that chest and get its goodies. And boom! Alright. So, as you might have noticed, Sparks is blue because I fell in the water earlier. Again, if you flame a passive creature like these frogs, they'll drop a butterfly and Sparks will just eat it right up. Alright, coming up here with the three shielded Norks and the big guy. So one thing I find kind of funny, it was in the original, but I still like it, uh, is when those big guys hit you, you actually get squished flat. And it's kind of comical and funny, and I like it. Um, you can flame these fire pits over here. I don't know if they do anything. Um, but if you turn around coming up these stairs, you've actually got some platforms to fly to. One has a green gem, and the other has a little cave on it. Right over here. Chest, few gems, and an extra life. Not too bad. Alright, so come up these stairs, 
We've got two more big guys and another sh two shielded guys. I didn't see that guy. Um, one thing I like to do is if I miss him with the charge, I'll jump up to stop me right away, and then I'll turn around in midair and flame the guy. Doesn't always work, but I found it a pretty good strategy if you miss the charge. Coming down in the pit after you defeat the guy, there's just two chests down here and a few gems on the stairs. Finally, across the way, there's another dragon. Big enemies like this Nork with the club cannot be charged, but a quick flame, that should defeat them. That's the guy who explains the enemies. All right, so behind the dragon, We've got a few more gems, and then, I believe... Oh no, I'm missing one. Alright. Sparks, show me the way. Oh, right there. Alright. So that is everything in this world. Pretty quick and easy levels in the first world. Nothing too bad. And I think we still have time, so I'm going to head off to the boss now. Alright guys, we're back in the home world. I'm heading over to the boss level. And with that, I think we're going to head in. Alright guys, so this is Toasty, the boss level. As you see, we got a couple shepherds here. They have some dogs next to them, which I don't like. But first thing you want to do is come back and look at these gems. Alright, now I like to make special mention of the graphics in here. Uh, if I can find a picture, I will flash on screen the original version of this. But just look how beautiful this looks, guys. Honestly, it is amazing what they did to this game, and I'm really impressed. So with that, let's head in. Uh, one thing you want to be careful of, every shepherd is going to have a dog next to it. Uh, here's a good time to explain that if you hit the right bumper or left bumper, Fire actually does a roll to the left or right. What I like to do is I like to blame the dogs real quick and then roll a couple times to the left or the right to avoid them. They'll try and jump on you and flatten you just like the guys with the clubs, and it takes two hits to defeat them. So just be careful of that. On this platform up here, we got a shepherd with two dogs. Careful not to go up in the middle or both the dogs are gonna try and attack you at once. Now, these dogs don't look too bad, but in the original, they look scary as crap, man. And again, after I conquered my fear of Dark Hollow, I came here and I immediately got scared again. Alternatively, if you've already gotten hit and they're walking back to their spot, you can flame them twice in quick succession to get rid of them before they can attack you. Um, but with that, let's head inside this castle here. Now, this is the first level with actually, like, a secret hidden in it. And I am sucking it terribly. But now is a really good time to explain. Um, since I got hit so many times and I don't have sparks, I can't actually collect the gems unless I physically touch them. So that's one thing to keep in mind if sparks is gone and I died. Oh no! Okay guys, welcome back. So, I died, but the cool thing is when you die, all the gems you've collected, you do get to keep. All the enemies you defeated previously in that level come back, but they just drop the orbs that'll give you extra life. So I'm gonna go around quick, I'm gonna beat all these enemies up. Alright guys, took out all the enemies. I did get hit a couple times, so Sparks is green. Uh, back in the castle. We'll have to uh, beat up these dogs again. That's the guy who got me last time. Alright. Another dog and shepherd over here. Nothing too bad about that. Okay, now the forest, like, semi-secret, it's not terribly hidden, but I missed it on my first time. Again, I was six, so can't blame me too much. 
is this window here. You come out here, there's a gem, but there's also a ledge that goes around back that's kind of hard to see. Got a couple more dogs on it and a shepherd. Again, if you're low on health, be careful. Dogs are kind of tricky to dodge. I will admit that. They're the first enemy that I honestly have slight problems with. So with that, the ledge is clear. We come back in. We got another shepherd. I already took out the dog in front of him. And we've got our first dragon. Never. Nasty Nork has put one of his most devious henchmen in charge of the artisan world. Bring him on! I think I smell a barbecue. Be careful, Spyro. Toasty has many tricks up his sleeve. All right, so I'm excited to meet this Toasty. He kind of looks a little, uh, a little menacing there. Fortunately, I do have no health, so I might die in this battle. We'll see, though. Uh, first stage is he's got a. Yep, there I go. <laughs> Alright guys, so we're back. Can't believe I got hit on the first enemy in the boss battle. Oh well. Got another couple dogs. It does look pretty messy. He's got like a pumpkin head, scythe, a goat sticking out of him. That's weird. Um, But all you gotta do is he's a lot like the shepherds. If you walk up to him, he'll swing at you with the scythe. Uh, just gotta flame him before he does. You do that, he'll run off dropping a coin. Second stage has two dogs, third stage has three dogs, nothing super interesting to talk about here, just got to flame the first a couple times. Funny though, is after you flame the second time, he is just a goat on stilts, there's nothing too special about him at all. Don't know why all the other dragons were so afraid of him, but he does look kind of mean, doesn't he? Third stage. Same as the first, you walk up to him, he'll swing at you, flame him, he'll drop, <clears throat> sorry, he'll drop 15 coins and release the portal home. Behind the wall, there's two chests with glass gems in them, and that is everything 100% in the artisan's world. So, let's go home. Alright guys, that was Toasty. So with that, the first world is complete. We will be going off to the Balloonus now, but real quick, if you're playing along, you should have a thousand gems, 16 dragons, and two dragon eggs to 100% the first world. Anyways, now that we've completed the first world, we're going to talk to Marco, but I think we're going to admire the view and do that in the next episode. So if you guys liked my video, please leave a like, leave a comment below, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It really helps out a lot. Uh, if you have any critiques on how I could make my videos better, then by all means, leave a comment down in the comment section below. And I will see you guys next time. See ya!